Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Sing with me again, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God. If our God is for us, if our God is for us, what could ever stop us? If our God is with us, what could stand again? What could stand? If our God is for us, sing it with me. If our God, if our God is for us, what could ever stop us? If our God is with us, what could stand again? What could stand? Mighty God. Our God is greater. Sing it, church. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. My God. God, we love you this morning. It's here, the book we've been waiting for, Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks to Us, a complete guide to hearing God. Pastor Sean Pinner gives readers life-changing keys on exploring, understanding, and experiencing the voice of God, which every believer can hear on a daily basis. Packed with powerful revelations, this book shares the methods, means, and motivations for the voice of God and provide answers to questions like how to hear God, recognize His voice, tap into His guidance, and much more. Receive confidence on hearing God through the Word, dreams and visions, divine impressions, and more. And discover a much deeper and more intimate walk with the Lord. Order Seven Ways the Holy Spirit Speaks Today, available on Amazon and all major book suppliers. Your journey into the powerful realms of God's voice starts here. We love you, Jesus. We love you with everything in us. Minister to your people on this morning. Strengthen them. Encourage your people through the Word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Your will be done, not ours. Set us free from unforgiveness and bitterness because we want your plans to be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus name we pray someone say amen well praise God good morning to all of you precious saints of the most high God listen we are talking about set free from unforgiveness you know we have been focusing on the plan of God coming into 2020 and unforgiveness and bitterness can hinder the plan and the purpose of God from being fulfilled in your life. You know, Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three, and we all love that scripture, but that scripture is followed by some very serious scriptures. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three through 26, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the midst of the sea, but shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass, Jesus said, he shall have whatever he say. He said, and whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That's verse 24. Verse 25, he says, and when you stand praying, he said, when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, because if you don't forgive, verse 26, neither will your heavenly father forgive you of your trespasses. Now that's plain English. Jesus said, if you don't forgive, he said, neither will your heavenly father forgive you of your trespasses. I told the story on Sunday that, you know, in 99, we were seeking God about going deeper into his plan for our lives. And on that, I was fasting and just really seeking God about 
the ministry of signs, wonders, and miracles and what God was calling us to do. We, we just weren't satisfied. We wanted to go deeper. But on that fast, God showed me over 40 people. I needed to call them. And whether I wronged them or they wronged me, it didn't matter to God. God said, call them and ask for forgiveness. You have bitterness to us. So I had to make all of these phone calls. Lord have mercy. But I was so happy I obeyed God because after I obeyed him, I was set free. I was free to do the will of God. And right after that fast, miracles begin to break out. The sick begin to get healed so it wasn't God's fault that people weren't being healed through our ministry I had some stuff in my life I had to get out I had to get it out of the way of the power of God a lot of times we're not prospering we are not being successful and we are quick to blame everybody else except turning looking our own self in the mirror and asking the Holy Ghost to, to turn the search light on David said search my heart O God and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting so now I want to I want to show you this in the life of Joseph where he had to walk out his forgiveness with his brothers that had sold him into slavery. He hadn't seen them for 22 years. And you know, I believe Joseph was carrying this thing because remember when he interpreted the butler's dream, he said, "Look, when you get before Pharaoh, make mention of me because I was sold into slavery and I have done nothing wrong. That meant it still bothered him that he's, lie, he's sold into slavery. He didn't do anything to deserve it, but it all had to do with the plan of God. And Joseph collided with the revelation of what his dream really meant. He understood his purpose. When Joseph saw his purpose and realized this was God. Man, he forgave his brothers. Ooh, glory. Let's, let me, let's read this. Genesis chapter 45, beginning at verse 1 from the New Living Translation of the Bible. So his brothers now, he, they are arguing in the front of him and they're saying, man, all of this stuff is happening to us because we have, we, we have done wrong to Joseph. So now we, we, we get locked up. This man's cup is found in Benjamin's bag. This is, this only could be, man, God's doing this to us. God's punishing us. And they don't realize that Joseph could understand every word they are saying because he was speaking to them through an interpreter. He didn't speak to them in their local language. So he could understand everything they were saying. And now Joseph did his little test on them to prove that they are changed. And they proved to Joseph that they are changed. And they were not the same wicked men that they were 22 years ago when they sold him into slavery. Chapter 45, Genesis 45, verse 1. Joseph could stand it no longer. There were many people in the room. And he said to his attendants, out all of you. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him. And word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. He had to weep. Can you imagine he's carrying this stuff for 22 years and didn't have a chance to resolve it. And now he is in the front of these brothers who ripped his coat off of him. Threw him down in a pit. Almost broke him up. Sold him into slavery. Took his coat dip it in the animal's blood, carried it to his dad and told his dad animal ate him. Man, that's, but this was all the plan of God. But man, I would have been struggling too. <laughs> hey, come on here. Don't, don't even play super spiritual with me on this. Now watch this. Listen to what he says. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. So they came closer. And he said again, I am Joseph, your brother whom you sold into slavery in Egypt. Don't be upset. Here, here it comes. Don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. Wow, Joseph got the revelation. He understood that this is God. Listen, this famine that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God, here it is. God has sent me ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many, many, and to preserve many survivors. God have a rough way of sending us into his plan. <laughs> Listen to this. So it was God who sent me here, not you. 
and he is the one who made me an advisor to Pharaoh and the manager of his entire palace and the governor of all of Egypt. Wow. Now watch this. We're coming down to the end of this thing. This is powerful. I want to take you into verse 13. Listen to what he says. Go tell my father of my honored position here in Egypt. Describe for him everything you have seen and then bring my father here quickly. Weeping with joy, he embraced Benjamin and Benjamin did the same. Then Joseph kissed each of his brothers and wept over them and after that they began talking freely with Joseph he forgave them he forgave them he released the bitterness he had the misunderstanding he realized it was the plan of God all along it takes a mature person in God to realize what the devil and people meant for evil. God meant it for your good. God had a plan all along. My God, my God, my God. Let those people go. God's at work in your life. God want to take you deeper into his plans. God want to take you deeper. I surrender. God want to take you deeper into his plans. But that bitterness, that hurt, that pain, it's a hindrance. You go so far and then that thing stirs up again and you remember the wrong that people have done to you and you become bitter and you begin to act it out and you begin to act hateful out of that anger and that hurt you have been carrying all of these years. This morning the Holy Ghost is asking you to surrender that thing to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's time to place that on the altar and allow the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The Bible says in 1 John 1 9, he's talking to the church, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Bitterness is unrighteousness. It's iniquity. We got to release it. Of course they did us wrong. But the Holy Ghost is saying, let them go. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, those people who have wounded me, those people in my family, my friends, the church, in the workplace, in college, university, my business partners, the husband who betrayed me, the wife who betrayed me, the children who betrayed me, the parents who betrayed me, aunts, uncles, friends, God, I forgive them this morning. I realize I've been carrying this thing and the Holy Ghost I pointed out in my life I surrender it all on the altar this morning. I release them. I forgive them. And I'm asking you to forgive me, God, for carrying the pain and the hurt, the bitterness and the unforgiveness around towards them. Forgive me for my attitude towards those who have hurt me and wounded me and mistreated me and lied on me and called me everything. But a child of God, give me genuine love towards them. Even if they don't treat me right, Help me to walk in love. Let me be the example of Jesus. Let me do what Jesus did on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I release them this morning. I release them this morning. In Jesus' name, I let them go. All to thee, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Come on, surrender that hurt, surrender that pain. Oh, I surrender all. That husband who divorced you wrongfully, that wife who walked out on you, 
forgive them. Let them go. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. I surrender. Oh, I surrender all. He's the mighty God. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Listen, I want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed into the ministry, into the kingdom of God. You can visit us online right now. SeanPinder.net forward slash give. SeanPinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. That address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. The dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries. P.O. Box 2726 McKinney, Texas 75070. We love you all. We appreciate you. If you didn't have a chance to subscribe to this channel, go ahead and do it right now. And never forget me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy. We love you, we appreciate you, and we don't take you for granted. God bless. See you on tomorrow. Bye-bye.